In this episode, we're going to cover 11 top tips and tricks to help you build a cracking third act that sneaks up behind your audience, tugs down their pants, and gives their backside a damn good spanking. And no, you don't have to say sorry. With a 120 minute movie, you're going to have used 30 minutes for act one, 60 minutes for act two. That's gonna leave you 30 minutes to bring the whole story to a satisfactory conclusion. Straight out of the gate, your hero needs to recognize their flaw or weakness and make efforts to repair. In many respects, this is very similar to the start of Act 2, where they're preparing for a mission, assembling the crew, etc. Except this time, the hero isn't in the shadow of the mentor. Before the hero can actually take on the antagonist, they have to pierce through the villain's defences. In action films, this is classically symbolised by a storming of the enemy fort. This can't be overstated enough, but when your hero has overcome their weakness or flaw, they are elated and feel as if they could walk on air or take on the world. It's this energy that reinvigorates the audience and carries them through the finale of the third act. With all this enlightenment going on for the hero, it's very easy to forget that you still have an antagonist who has a dastardly and devious plan. Just as the hero is rising like a phoenix out of the ashes, so too your antagonist has to up the ante. It's the escalation of these two characters which creates the climax of the third act. The third act has two key turning points, the first being midway through, and it's often referred to as the false resolution or twist. It's where the audience believes the film has come to a conclusion, or it's a twist, and by twist we mean it changes the audience's perception of the film up to date. Warning. If you are looking at the latter and having a twist and a big reveal, make sure that it is earned and well seeded throughout the story. Okay, so the climax is really what the film is all about. It actually wasn't about the hero fighting and overcoming the antagonist. It was really about the hero overcoming their weakness or flaw and facing their demons. It's important, therefore, at the end of the film to show this and show what it means to the hero. Clichés aren't bad. They're actually an effective tool to draw an additional emotional response from the audience. So don't be afraid of them and learn how to use them. If you had a time machine and could take your hero from the end of Act 3 all the way back to the start of Act 1 in the real world, they would seem to have outgrown it. This is the essence of a great story arc. Brilliant movies are usually brilliant because they've taken the audience and the hero on an emotional journey that's concluded at the end of Act 3 with the hero being better for their adventure. This is difficult, therefore, if you are looking at a sequel or potentially franchise movies. If that's going to be the case and there's even a glimmer, it's important to see how that fits with your story from the outset. Finally, movie endings should be satisfying, thought-provoking, memorable and exhilarating. They are, after all, the result of a carefully worked out equation. The secret to storytelling is hiding the maths behind the formula. Thanks for watching and please take time to like and subscribe. If you want to see more videos or you have any comments on this video, please leave your suggestions in the comments section below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks again and best of luck finding your own stories. In this episode... <coughs> <coughs> Ah, in this episode, we are going to die of tuberculosis. <coughs> <coughs> what a strange coffee noise. <sighs> okay, game face.